everyone. Welcome to Dad That Cooks. I'm John. I'm Jack. And we have Cookie down here, if you're wondering. Uh, shall we say hello to everyone? Come here. That's if you're wondering what the other, the other noise was. Jack, what are we making today? Ginger biscuits for Mummy. It's Mummy's favourite ginger biscuits. They're so easy to make, I can't tell you how easy they are. Uh, what you need to do, you need to start the oven at 180 degrees. You need to get a, a tray, a cookie tray ready. Uh, we use a silicon sheet, which is really, really useful because it means you don't go through lots of baking parchment. But you could use baking paper, greaseproof paper on there. Uh, just get that ready and the oven on at 180, as I say. Now you're going to help me, aren't you? So yes. can you zero the scales? <laughs> get a little saucepan because it actually is a hot mix that you do on this. So press zero again. And then it's all the 60s. So we're going to have some golden syrup. Tell me when to stop when we get to 60. 60 grams. It's a lot. Oh, are we there yet? No. Are you sure? There! <laughs> that's 64. Oh, well, that's all right. Uh, and then you need some light brown sugar. Now, uh, any kind of brown sugar is fine. You could use golden castor or dark brown sugar. Essentially a brown sugar. Not a really big sugar like Demerara. Right, shall we go again? You're going to stop me at 60. Um, you're throwing it everywhere. <laughs> Are we there yet? No. There! No, no, it's not. And then you need to help me with this. You need to put big dollops of this. Let me get a spoon. This is going to be hard to do. So just get a big dollop like that and put it in, hang on. Put it in there. Right, we need 60 grams again. <laughs> oh, oh, you're throwing it everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Bit more. I think that would do it. Bit more. <gasps> Just a tiny bit, not a big bit. That's it. I think that will be enough. That's 62. Very good. Right. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Sorry. What are you doing? <laughs> what we do now is we put this on the saucepan. We put this on the <laughs> on the hob. Sorry, in the saucepan. Um, and you just warm up over a medium to high heat the mixture in the saucepan. So you're just trying to melt the margarine and the uh, sugar and the um, golden syrup. I can't, it's only three ingredients, I can't remember what they are. So we'll just give that a little stir. I know what they are. And we'll let that melt gently. Yay! And when we come back here, so you need to put the bowl on there. Go on, press zero again. I okay, need self-raising flour for this, and we need 120 hey. grams. Mm -hmm. No, put the bowl on, and then zero. Hey. <laughs> mm. Right, now we need yeah. 120. <laughs> mm. We need a lot. Um. There. There we are. 121! Oh, well, nearly. <laughs> Uh, and then, what do we need for ginger biscuits that we haven't got ginger. at the minute? Ginger! Yes, let me just go back to this and stir this a little bit. So you can see in that now, everything is melting. Doesn't need a high heat. Just make sure everything is melting got nicely. Flour everywhere over here. <laughs> That's alright, we can clean that up later. Yay! Do you know, I can never remember which one is my ginger. I think it might be that one, yes. Yay, ginger, ginger, ginger. What does it look like? You've used a lot of the ginger. Mm -hmm. That's because I make a lot of biscuits for mummy. Can you eat ginger on its own? You can. Now I need a little tiny teaspoon. It's going to be My little tiny teaspoon. It's tiny. This is the only teaspoon that gets in here. 
So you actually want at least a teaspoon of ginger. But if you like them particularly gingery, you can add a bit more. I love them particularly gingery. <laughs> it's hard to say particularly. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Particular. Right, now I can turn that off. You can see that that's all melted. <laughs> Make sure it doesn't start simmering or anything like that. That's much too hot. That is just right. Now, can you pour that in there without getting it everywhere? Go on. Oh, that's it. Yes. So you pour the dry mixture into the wet mixture. Should I leave this on here or take it off? You can leave it there if you want. Yay! <laughs> and as you stir it, what is happening is you're forming a really, really warm, wet dough. Mm. <laughs> I don't like it when it's warm and wet. And that's how it should end up looking. Uh, quite a wet dough. Mm. 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 But what does it smell of? Like hot ginger. Hot ginger. Well, that's the kind of ginger that we like. Right, Mr. Moo, can you get me two teaspoons out the drawer? I please? don't know what size is teaspoons. Just two teaspoons. Okay, one, two. Have you got the Doctor Who one of you? <laughs> one's smaller than the other, so sorry. That's all right. So what we're doing here now is you're getting a big fat lump on your teaspoon. And we're going to do 12 cookies. So can you help me count 12, Jack? One, two, that one's a bit small. I know. Ooh. Oh, three. Yeah. They're very forgiving once they're in the oven. Uh, now you you finished counting, have you? Because you didn't miss that one there. Eight. Yeah, finished counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, now eight, you can nine, add ten, to them. Nine, twelve. 13. They're not 13. <laughs> 13 Do dollars. Now 14 dollars. Now one thing I am going to do is I'm going to move that one a little bit further away. Why? Because they spread out in the oven. And then they might get stuck together. Yeah, and you don't want that really. No. That was going on my hands. <laughs> so that's how it looks. It looks a bit of a mess now, but when it comes out of the oven, it'll look super duper. That one looks like a fish. <laughs> So we put that in the oven now. <laughs> Can I have the fish one? Can you have the fish one yeah. if you want? Yay! <laughs> so we put that in the oven now for around about 12 minutes and we'll see how they end up looking. So uh, 12 minutes is the time that they usually take to bake, but check them after 10 minutes because they can go very brown very quickly. So I'm now going to take mine out of the oven after 11 minutes. Because that's in the middle. That's in the middle. So there we are. That's how they should look. You can see here, they are turning quite brown. If I'd have left them even in for another minute, they probably would have gone a bit too brown. So- Where's the fish? I told you they spread out when they're in the ah. oven. Ah, see? Ah. Now, what have you got to remember about ovens? They are hot. They are hot. So always make sure the grown up obviously does that and keep the children away from the hot, uh, and need hot to tray. And you need to with a tea towel. Oh, I've you do, that's good, health and safety. <laughs> now what I do is I leave them on the tray, they go flat a little bit, leave them on there for about five or 10 minutes, and then take them off the tray and leave them on the cooling rack uh, without the tray underneath. And we call mummy health and safety, mummy. <laughs> we do, yes. We <laughs> uh, now one of the things that uh, I think is important is that uh, kids know where their food comes from and all the different types of food from around the world. And now my friend Dean is now going to show you how to cook an aubergine curry. Uh, <laughs> you don't like aubergines, do you? No. no. But he's making an aubergine curry for his stepdaughter, Phoebe. So maybe go and see that. Well, that's what they're going to see now. <laughs> see, by the magic of telly, we're going to go to Dean's house. Over to you, Dean. 
Thanks, John. Hi, I'm Dean, and today I'm cooking brinjal bhaji, or aubergine curry. So, I'm half Arabic. A lot of Arabic cookery has aubergines in it. It's a favourite ingredient of theirs. But the dish I'm cooking today is actually Indian. Uh, reason being is that I love doing Indian cookery. I'm also wheat intolerant, and my stepdaughter Phoebe is vegetarian, so this is a gluten-free, vegetarian, in fact vegan dish. Uh, I'm doing it as a main course, I'm putting a few bits and bobs to kind of bulk it out a bit, but you can always cook this as a side dish along with a meaty main course if you wish. So before we do anything else, the first thing we need to do is to put these aubergines in the oven. I've preheated it to 180 degrees and cook it in there for about half an hour or so until the flesh is completely soft. So I've got myself a little baking tray and we've got one of these, I highly recommend, this is a reusable um, silicon baking parchment, which you basically just, rather than using a bit of paper and throwing it in the bin, you uh, reuse this, just give it a wash when it's done, and it does the job wonderfully. So it's a bit of uh, keeping things eco and all that. So these go in here, you don't need to put any oil or salt or anything on them at all. They just keep them as they are and put them in the oven, halfway through, probably turn them around. Right, so ingredients. Um, so I have got as my, uh, and I've got an onion, every, every wood curry starts with an onion, and we're gonna use a couple of cloves of garlic, a, as they always say, a thumb, thumb sized piece of ginger, a very fat thumb, um, a little green chili. Um, I don't like things too hot, so I'll be taking out the seeds and the membranes and chopping that up very finely. Um, some peppers, not necessarily part of the recipe, however, um, curry is a great way of uh, getting rid of uh, ingredients you might have lying around in your fridge. And so I've got a few peppers I need to use up, so in they go. I'm also going to have some frozen peas that we'll put in at the end plus a uh, tin of tomatoes. And um, then the spices that we have are, the first thing that will be going in are some nigella seeds, also known as onion seeds, plus some turmeric, uh, chili powder. So the chili, the green chili here will give it some flavor. The chili powder will give it some heat. And this stuff, garam masala. Now, garam masala is a very useful blend of different Indian spices. If I read the label here, it says it's coriander, cumin, turmeric, cinnamon, black pepper, cloves, ginger, cardamom, and dill seeds. So uh, you can obviously just make your own up, but this is a really useful thing to have. It is different from, and I've got some here, curry powder, totally different stuff. And the reason that we don't use curry powder is because curry powder isn't actually used in any Indian recipes. Curry powder is used for what I would call foreign recipes. So Indian inspired, but not Indian. So things off the top of my head, uh, from Britain, you might have coronation chicken or kedgeri. Uh, from Japan, you have chicken katsu curry, or one of my favorites, German curry verse. They all use curry powder, but Indian cookery never ever uses curry powder. So while my aubergines are in the oven, I am going to get chopping all of this. It's the most boring thing in the world to watch, so we'll go away and I'll come back through the magic of uh, camera work when all of this is done. See you in a bit. We have lovely soft aubergines. They've been ready for probably just over half an hour or so. Uh, give it a... Yes. There you go, right. So we just need to leave them to cool down a bit, and then when they're cool, we will scoop the flesh out with a spoon. So let's move that to one side. So I'm serving this dish with rice. And I need to talk to you about rice. You see, I told you I'm half Arabic. It's my dad who is Arabic and he cannot cook to save his life. However, if my mum cooks something which involves rice, he cooks the rice. It is his, his one role. And anybody who is fortunate enough to visit him at home, who mentions cooking and mentions rice, will be sat down and will be subjected to a 15 minute lecture on how to cook rice. And my, my lovely other half, Cathy, who's behind this camera, you've been subjected to this lecture, haven't you? Yes. So what we need to do with our rice is as follows. Just, I've just got basmati rice here. And all I've done is I've, soaked it for about half an hour to an hour 
in a nice bit of water. So come over here with me, shut the oven door there. With a clean hand, what you want to do is just give it a, a swirl around, just mix it with your, get your fingers in there. This is how we do it in the Middle East. Um, and what you'll see is that the water is now very gloopy, it's starchy. That's the starch coming out, excess starch. So we just pour that out. Make sure you don't drop any grains of rice out. And then repeat the process. Again, nice bit of water there. Just give it a mix around and do that a few times until you see that the water is clear or clearer. Um, and then you can move on to the next step. So I'm happy with that. I'm just now going to, so I'm now going to move on to the if I'm cooking it stage, which is basically give it There you go, about enough water that it's around about a centimetre or so above the line of the rice. And then we'll give it a little bit of salt and a tiny little drop of oil which stops the rice sticking to the bottom and sticking together. There you go. And the rice is now ready to cook. So we now move on to the aubergine stage. Right, so I have uh, taken the aubergines out of their skin. In fact, they had cooked long enough, about 35, 40 minutes, that they actually, the, the skin crisped up and it came away very easily. So that is that all chopped up and ready to go in later. I've put about a tablespoon of vegetable oil in there, just enough to cover the base of this pan. Um, what I'm using is a flat bottomed, uh, sort of wok, not an authentic Chinese wok, the kind of wok you'll get in an English uh, shop, but importantly it comes with a lid because you'll need a lid for this. So this, I don't really, I don't really use this as a wok, I use this as a, like a multi-purpose uh, kind of vessel for cooking anything really, um, but they're very useful for curries. So we want to put a generous handful of, of these onion seeds, probably a bit more than there, that much. And there you go, you hear that sizzle, that is what we want. Give that a little shuffle you around. Um, the other bit of equipment I'm using that's very, very useful is one of these. It's a silicon spatula. Um, it helps you scrape all the bits around the edges of things and, and is very, very useful. Um, so I've also chopped up garlic, chili, jumped that up, garlic, chili and ginger. And do make sure you wash your hands after you've been chopping chilies, because if you don't and you touch your eyes or you go to the toilet or anything like that, disaster awaits. So I am happy that these are sizzling away. So the next thing I want to do is add my onions. So I have sliced these up and as you put them in, just use your fingers to separate them out. That's a little bit hot, and then turn that down. Get a bit of oil splashing on the layer. Um, and you want to hear that sizzle. So if you're not sure if the pan and the oil is hot enough, then just drop like one or two slices in and wait until you hear that sizzle. And once it's sizzling, you're then good to throw the rest of them in. So let's just put all that in there. And just give that a good stir around. If you don't have or can't get hold of onion seeds, then don't worry, you can leave them out. It's not vitally essential to this dish, but it is a nice addition. So don't uh, don't think you can't make this because you can't find Nigella seeds. They're in most supermarkets. Um, I'm very lucky that we've got um, an excellent uh, specialist worldwide supermarket in uh, Brighton where I live and you can get all these type of things uh, but I realise that other people may not have such wonderful places in their locality. Right, 
So, just leave them for a little bit. The, uh, the thing they always say about cooking curries with onions is your curry is only as good as the amount of care you take over your onions. So you don't want to burn them, you don't want to overcook them, but you don't want to undercook them either. So we've got this on a medium gas flame, and I just basically want them to go translucent and soft without going golden. So that will take a little bit of time. So we'll be back in one sec when my onions are where I want them to be. Right, so my onions are where I want them to be now. You can see they're, they're soft, but they haven't gone golden or anything like that. So next thing to do is to put in the garlic and ginger and chopped chilies. So in they go, make sure you see. Again, the useful thing with this is you can get into all the nooks and crannies of your container. In that goes. And just give that a stir about for a few moments. Maybe put the heat up a little. Remember, every time you put something new into your pan, the pan will get slightly less hot because something new is going into it and it's got a greater load to contend with. So it's always worth just putting your pan up, up a tiny little bit before you do that. So, um, there you go, there you go, away. and then we also want to add in our dried powdered spices. So I have got a teaspoon of turmeric, just under a teaspoon of chili powder because I don't like it too hot as I said before, and a teaspoon of garam masala that we're talking about. So just sprinkle that nice and evenly as you can into there. Give that a good stir around, get underneath it, get to the bottom and give it a stir. And look, you can see immediately that the oil is going a lovely orange colour, which is from that turmeric. And although you can't smell it, you have to take my word for it, that we're now getting a wonderful aroma coming out of that. And there we go. Give that a stir around, just let everything sort of mingle together. So all the onions are covered in the now flavoured oil. That is looking wonderful. So next I'm going to throw in my peppers again. Turn the heat up a little bit. In they go. And again, just work that around using this silicon spatula. And just getting everything covered in your spice mix. go and one little tip that I picked up from watching a man cooking for like 500 people in an Indian temple is just put a tiny little splash of water at this point literally there you go that much and what that does is it will stop your spices from burning because you do not want burnt spices, they go very, very bitter. So there you go. So we are going to leave that to simmer for a moment. Just get those peppers nicely cooked. There we go. Give it a shape. And then we want to put in the tinned tomatoes. And that goes, break out all the juices, and again just mix that around nicely. I'm telling you, this is smelling fabulous. Now, you do not need to add any water to this because as the peppers cook out and as the aubergines, which we haven't put in yet, cook out, they will release their water. So this will get more watery, more liquid than it is already. But I'm going to put that up to full, bring it up to the boil, and once it's boiling, put the lid on and simmer it. So here we go, look, we can see it's now starting to bubble around the edges, so you know it's coming up to temperature. It looks 
wonderful as well, so many different colours in there. So we'll now put the lid on, leave this for a little while to simmer, I said bring it up to temperature, simmer it down. We now put the rice on full blast and literally the moment it starts boiling, bring it down to a, mi a, sim a simmer, the minimum heat you can get. And what we then want to do is to just let the rice absorb all of the water. Right, so my rice has come to a boil. So turn that right down to a minimum. Keep the lid on, keep the lid on the whole time. Meanwhile, I'm going to take the lid off of this. The lid going on this will help steam those peppers, make them nice and soft. There we go. And you can see already we've got a lot more water than we had before. So it's now time to throw in our aubergine. Just give that a good mix around to incorporate it into everything. Look at that, this is looking huge now. So anyone, I always used to think vegetarian food doesn't fill you up and it wasn't very big and actually I couldn't be more wrong because you can just put more and more stuff in as much as you want and it will feed an army. Um, and also I'm going to throw in my uh, frozen, not say frozen now, peas. There they go, in they go. I'll give that a mix around as well. Peas don't need to cook all that long as does the aubergine because obviously the aubergine is already cooked. Um, if you overcook your peas, they lose their colour, they go a bit hard, um, no fun there. So, basically, all we need to do now is just carry on simmering that way and wait for uh, our rice to, to finish cooking and absorb all of that water. Also, what I'm doing over here, um, I have got some coriander leaves, which I'm going to use as a garnish um, at the end. Um, but... I'm just separating out the leaves and the stalks. I don't know if you can see that. Come over here, absolutely, there you go. So you just basically just pull, oops, that didn't work, let's try it again. Do it in another one. You just pull off the leaves from the stalks. They'll come off like that in your hand. And The stalks have a tremendous amount of flavour that people don't seem to always realise. So I'm going to chop up these little stalks in a moment and put them into my pan right now because that will just give it a lovely flavour of coriander. Now I'm well aware that coriander is one of those things that people either love or hate. It is, it is the marmite of, of herbs. So if you don't like it, just leave it out. I absolutely love the stuff myself. So there we go. In that goes. Get it all in. Another stir. Right. I know I've said it before, but that does smell amazing. Lid on, and just leave that now. That is all we need to do until we chop the coriander up for the end. Right, my rice is cooking away. You can see that the water level has decreased and that the rice is now starting to emerge from the water. So um, the last thing that we need to do with this and this is a bit, if you, if you look at what chefs on TV, they all have different ways of doing it and people say, I'll just leave it. No, no, no. The important thing here is that once all the water is absorbed, you turn the rice. So you basically get from the bottom and shift it over to the top. So the stuff that's been on the top gets, a, gets some heat from the bottom. The stuff that's been on the bottom gets the airing at the top. That's the last thing we'll do with that. And then the rice will be ready to serve and we're all good to go. Right, so my rice has now absorbed all of the water, so I think we have got to the point where we want to just turn it so it doesn't get too wet. Um, so you just want to kind of go around the edge like that with another one of these wonderful little silicon thingies and 
just turn it over like that so that there we go what was on the bottom is a little bit that's stuck to the bottom there which is why we want to turn it what was on the bottom is now on the top and vice versa give that a spread out and a shake lid back on that'll take another two to three minutes probably and then we'll be good to serve up right we are ready to dish up so uh let me grab my rice put that in here this is just plain rice i mean you can depending on the dish you can uh add things like um black pepper and um turmeric to it but uh that has just a little bit of stuff there, nothing too bad. There you go, that is all done. And always just give it a little sprinkle of salt on the top. And overshine curry time. Just pull that in. Oh, this looks so good. And again, the beauty of this little silicon doodah is that I can just scrape all of that sauce out, all that gravy. There we go. And of course, we must not forget our garnish of coriander over the top. Makes all the difference, you know. And there we have it. Close up Clive, as uh, Keith Floyd would say. Brinjal bhaji with boiled rice. Lovely. Thank you, Dean. That looks super yummy. It really did. And now these are cooling down. They look super great. Really, really lovely. They smell delicious. And we're going to tuck into those in a bit. So that's the end of this video. See you in the next video. Good one. Don't forget to like and subscribe, please, and share this with all your friends as well. We'll be doing these uh, regularly. We're in lockdown two at the minute, so hopefully you get some ideas to do some cooking with your kids. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.